Okay. Good morning. I'm going to describe um, uh, the new facility, the new deposition facility we installed recently at the University of Sanio, and I will show you the first samples we produced and uh, characterized. Okay, after a brief introduction on coating branial noise, I will uh, remind briefly the paradigm of coatings based on nanometer layer and the composite. I will describe the facility and uh, I will show you the preliminary results about the characterization of these samples and then conclusions and the future plans. Okay, as you, as you know, coating branial noise is uh, crucial in the main frequency band because it limits the sensitivity. So it is a, a crucial uh, task uh, in the Virgo and the LIGO and the LIGO design uh, because in, the, in this band the first signals were observed and many other are expected to be seen. So it is very important to reduce the coating brownian, brownian noise. Some efforts are being devoted to understand the origin of brownian noise, which is not completely understood. They are um, associated to thermally activated transitions between the local minima of energy in amorphous oxides. And these transitions have been modeled using an asymmetric double well potential separated by a barrier height. Uh, some studies are devoted to the study uh, um, and the modeling of the distribution of these parameters, but other studies are devoted to, um, to inspect possible correlations directly between the mechanical loss angle phi and the uh, atomic structures of the materials. For example, in this interesting uh, paper by Bassiri, um, it has been found a strong correlation between the mechanical loss angle, uh, they studied um, Titania dove tantala, uh, and the uniformity, the homogeneity of the material. So it is important to have to, to deposit uh, um, uh, coatings with a very high level of uniformity. So the power spectral density of the coating branial noise can be cast in this uh, form, where we can uh, envisage several strategies to reduce coating, uh, uh, coating branial noise. For example, we can reduce the temperature, the work temperature, uh, hence going toward cryogenic uh, detectors. But uh, uh, in this case, um, materials of the coating must be accurately chosen because some materials uh, um, present a peak, a, lo a mechanical loss peak at uh, low uh, temperature. For example, tantala or silica are among these uh, uh, materials. Or it is possible to enlarge the beam width, for example, using a high order gauss lager mode, but without having a huge impact on the, on the entire instrument. Uh, or it is possible to directly act on the effective mechanical loss angle uh, of the coatings. Uh, coatings are essentially made um, currently uh, by multi-layers of two materials, uh, silica and titania dove tantala, uh, and for small Poisson ratios, it is possible to uh, write the effective mechanical loss angle in this, in this way, where uh, Z are, is the optical thickness of the material, and B is the, um, uh, is the measure of a noisiness per unit of opt optical thickness. So, uh, for fixed material, it is possible to tune the geometry and to optim um, optimize layer thickness uh, is what has been done for current uh, coatings installed on uh, LIGO and on advanced LIGO and advanced Virgo. Or it is possible to use completely different geometry. Uh, or for a fixed geometry, you can optimize the, the materials. Um, for example, using uh, mixing different, uh, different materials uh, and uh, nano, uh, coatings uh, based on nanometer layer and composite go uh, in this direction. A nanometer layer and composite is a stack of uh, layers very, very thin uh, with sub-wavelength thickness down to few nanometers behaving uh, macroscopically as a homogeneous film. And this kind of mixture has, uh, um, have uh, uh, very interesting properties with respect to amorphous uh, uh, mixture, uh, which are currently obtained by cospattering. Um, first of all, they are uh, stable against uh, uh, the formation of crystallites um, during the annealing, uh, the annealing process. Uh, in this picture, we see clearly the difference between pure uh, titania 
uh, annealed and a, a, a mixture of uh, silica and titania annealed at the same temperature. So we can see, uh, clearly see the difference between the two, um, uh, the two material. Then uh, the stratified layer and the mixer are amenable to simple modeling since uh, they attain uh, bounds both for electromagnetic uh, properties and for mechanical properties uh, which are known analytically. So it is possible to easily en uh, engineer these composites because uh, all properties are known analytically and uh, uh, they uh, should be less noisy than amorphous mixture at uh, the same effective refractive index. So they are um, very interesting to uh, inspect and these uh, properties have been verified uh, by uh, experimentally on the sam on first samples produced uh, by Professor Chao in Taiwan. And we actually found that the thinner uh, the layers, the nanolayers, the higher is uh, the annealing temperature that a composite can tolerate before starting crystallization. Um, and this is very important uh, um, um, because uh, uh, this kind of mixtures allow to use also materi interesting materials like titania, uh, which are prone to crystallization but uh, um, uh, have interesting properties. So with this kind, within this kind of mixture, these materials can be used. And in view of these uh, interesting results, the um, uh, R&D topic of nanolayered composite have been included in the a first R&D topic in the LIGO uh, coating, uh, uh, LIGO instrument science white paper. Uh, within the context of the Virgo coating uh, uh, R&D group, uh, we are setting a network to uh, produce and uh, study uh, coatings based on nanometer layer and the composite, uh, as uh, Matteo uh, described uh, before. But I will focus on the new facility recently installed at University of Sanyo. Here you can see the front of the, of the machine, the rear view, and the location. In this location, uh, which is uh, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty um, good, um, several other laboratories from University of Sanyo are going to move, uh, but we are the first one. And uh, our machine, this is the vacuum chamber, as a high vacuum chamber. This is the EB gun with the six uh, crucibles uh, with, uh, where we can load the dif uh, six different materials. Um, uh, here is the plasma sauce to assist the deposition and to guarantee a good uniformity uh, of, the, of the deposited coatings. Uh, it is possible to feed in the chamber argon and oxygen uh, before, during, or after the deposition. Any parameter is completely programmable from, the, from a software um, with the graphical user interface. This is the substrate from support. Uh, this is the support for, um, for a substrate. We have a support for one, two, and three inch um, substrate. And this support can rotate to uh, enhance the uniformity all over the chamber. And uh, we have also in this uh, machine ceramic lamps over here to, uh, to the position at uh, higher temperature. So they heat the substrate and uh, we can deposit material with the, sub with the heated substrate. So we started to produce samples. This is the first sample, um, which is a monolayer of uh, silica, uh, 250 nanometers thick, which was deposited with these uh, parameters uh, on a, a silicon substrate of one inch um, diameter. Uh, um, several samples were co-deposited. Some of them were shipped to Salerno, where uh, um, the Salerno group uh, did the AFM characterization, um, which gives a first measure of the roughness. Um, uh, for this particular sample, they measured the roughness of 4 plus 1 uh, nanometer, but um, we measured also um, roughness lower than this, as we see later and also gives a first um, degree of uniformity of the coatings, uh, uh, which is um, pretty good. Uh, then the same sample underwent to um, lithography process to uh, measure the, the actual value of the thickness and also the thickness uniformity all over the sample. This is the, the same sample after the lithography. 
And, um, and uh, this analysis showed that the, the, the coatings were, were at, a, at a very high degree of uniformity because the thickness was uh, uh, the same uh, in the middle and at the, edge of, and at the edge of the sample. The value of the thickness is uh, slightly higher than uh, expected since we still have to calibrate the machine for any uh, material. And then other samples were shipped to Roma Tor Vergata to a major mechanical loss angle with the GENS setup. And this is the, the result of the measurement. And the, the, uh, such analysis uh, um, gave a value of the mechanical loss angle of the silica coating before annealing, so as deposited, which is in an excellent agreement with the uh, values reported in the literature. So it is a, a good result as a first uh, sample deposited with our machine. And then the same sample were shipped to Genova, where uh, they had the spectroscopic ellipsometry. And also the ellipsometry uh, confirmed the high level of uniformity of the coating since the, uh, the, 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 the curves are perfectly superimposed. They measure the, in, uh, the, the, the response in uh, these three points, and the curves were perfectly superimposed. So this confirms the high degree of uniformity of the deposited coatings. We had other samples deposited. For example, we deposited double side silica layer. We deposited double side to, <coughs> to compute the dilution factor and, uh, um, and to uh, inspect the effects of, of a post deposition annealing of this kind of coatings. And uh, we also deposited the first multi layer titania silica uh, with and without the plasma assistance, uh, basically to check the, the, the effect of the plasma assistance on the parameters uh, of, the, um, of the deposited coatings. And these uh, samples are still under characterization, but I will show you a very preliminary uh, result. Uh, this is the, uh, these are the, the, the AFM measurement for the double side silica layer uh, deposited at the, this uh, condition. And uh, um, the AFM uh, gives a level of uh, roughness, uh, uh, which is pretty good, 1.5 plus minus 0.6 nanometer, which is comparable um, to the roughness of the substrate. Um, then, uh, the, also the, for, this, for this sample, uh, the mechanical loss angle was also measured in Roma to Vergata, which resulted in slightly uh, higher mechanical losses. But this, uh, um, um, this is due to different deposition uh, condition we set because we uh, switch off the plasma assistance and also the, um, the, the support of the substrate was uh, not rotating. Um, and the, the poor uniformity of this sample was also confirmed by the, ellipsomet the um, uh, spectroscopic ellipsometry measurement uh, made in, uh, in Genova. So uh, this gives us a first, um, um, uh, a very, a first evidence, which is important, that they did, which, uh, which regards the effect of the plasma source uh, and also of the rotation of the, of the support for the substrate. Um, then uh, uh, the last sample we deposited is a nanometer layered uh, uh, composites of titania and silica. Uh, we deposited uh, uh, first with the plasma assistance and then uh, uh, without plasma assistance. And these are the AFM um, measurements. The roughness is also uh, pretty good. And, uh, uh, but the, 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 the analysis of the thickness uniformity revealed that the uh, sample deposited with the plasma assistance uh, is uh, very uniform because the thickness is, uh, uh, is the same uh, overall the sample, but um, uh, uh, the sample deposited with, without the plasma assistance was not so uh, uniform. In, uh, indeed, you can see that the, the thickness is uh, higher in the, uh, in the middle and slightly lower uh, at, the, um, at the, the edge of the sample. So uh, there is another evidence that the plasma assistance is important to have a very uniform uh, coating. So what are, what are plans? Uh, first of all, we need to finish the thickness calibration. So to find uh, the meshing factor for any interesting material you are going to, uh, to deposit. 
then uh, we need to investigate uh, uh, the impact uh, on uh, coatings of all deposition parameters, like the deposition rate, the uh, carousel rotation speed, the temperature and pressure of the chamber, uh, the, the effect of the plasma, uh, and other uh, parameters of the deposition. And uh, after, uh, afterwards, we need to start the, um, the, the production of the uh, nanometer layer the composites, uh, um, basically producing different prototypes having the same effective refractive index, but different uh, uh, number of uh, uh, nanolayers, uh, um, which have different thickness. Uh, so to measure the maximum annealing temperature they can tolerate before crystallization, and measure the optical and the mechanical properties. So in conclusion, coatings based on nanometer layer and the composites are, are worth of being explored. An integrated and complementary Italian network within the context of the Virgo uh, coating R&D has started to study this kind of coatings, and in particular we finished the, the startup phase of the new coating deposition facility uh, located at the University of Sannio. And we already have a few important evidence that uh, the, roughness we can, the roughness of the samples we can reach with these facilities uh, is very good. Uh, and also the plasma systems deposition provides very uniform and compact coatings. And uh, um, the rotation of the substrate support is important to have uniform, uh, uniformity of the samples uh, all over the, uh, the chamber. So these are back slides. Questions, comments? So, if I understand well, up to now you measure just uh, one or two layers of uh, nanolayers uh, uh, of coating, right? So you, don't, you, you never try to do a, a stack of. Uh, yes, we tried. It is the last sample I showed. Uh, um, okay, these are measurements on a nanometer layer of titanium silica. These are. Uh, uh, 10 doublets Ten of doublets, uh, titania okay. and silica. Uh, 20, uh, each, each doublet is uh, 25 nanometers thick. Okay, so each okay. layer is uh, 12 nanometers. Okay, thanks. And can you already make a comparison with the results uh, in literature? Um, okay, in the um, gravitational wave uh, coatings literature, there is no uh, such coatings uh, yet. Uh, there is only the, the paper we published on Optics Express, the one I showed. These are the only samples produced uh, so far. Okay, this one. And uh, for example, here, uh, they were produced in Taiwan, several prototypes uh, with the same effective refractive index, uh, but with different uh, uh, layers, nanolayers. For example, uh, it's too small. For example, uh, um, this is the X-ray uh, X diffraction uh, result uh, for the uh, different prototypes. Um, and the last one has uh, 19 layers, nanolayers, and it is the only one which does not show uh, the Anatasi peak, which is, uh, does not show crystallization. But uh, this one, which have um, uh, el, el, if less, um, a smaller number of, uh, of, uh, of nanolayers and the thicker, they show the, um, the they show, um, presence of crystal lights. So this is the only result present in the literature in the gravitational wave uh, scenario. Um, how big can be the, the sample? The uh, biggest sample that the you The one can, we produce? Yeah. We no, no, the, the, the machine. Can can, uh, uh, can code. Okay, uh, the machine can code up to three inch, uh, a sample uh, three inch of diameter. We have support for a sample of one to a three inch, uh, but the machine is completely um, uh, customizable. So, I think that we need only to build the support for a larger coating. Do you expect any problems when moving to larger optics? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Any okay. What 
about the reflectivity. Uh, I, I know that the coating is like a Bragg reflector, no? It's a multilayer, and you have a doublet. So uh, usually you tune the, reflect, uh, the, uh, the wavelength of reflectivity with the width of the, or with the duty cycle of the doublet. So what about, because usually in the Bragg reflector, like in fiber black reflector, you have the, the sides of the doublet that's more or less on one core quarter of a wavelength. I, I see a very, no. very short doublet. Uh, uh, okay. the, the, the last sample, I I showed, uh, uh, it was only um, a first prototype. With, uh, we didn't design the thickness so to be reflective at a, a given wavelength. We just uh, wanted to try um, the, the machine and just put a uh, just uh, um, uh, program the deposition of 20, uh, 20, la uh, 20 layers. Uh, uh, of course, of course, it is not designed to be... Especially for the future generation, if you, we want to, to go with the silicon, no? In, um, okay, but um, near maybe... Uh, okay, this is not the entire... However, this is not the entire coatings, because uh, what, what, we, uh, what we are going to, uh, to, um, to measure first is the sim single material. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. So the, the nanolayer, nanolayer and the composite will take the place of one of these uh, layers. So um, you will have, for example, silica, uh, an alternate uh, multilayer of silica and the layer at the composite, silica and the layer at the composite. So we are first inspect the single layer and then we will, uh, we will go toward the entire coatings, yes. the entire coatings. laser, no? Uh, to have a reflective, high reflective, I don't know, maybe you, um, um, you must have a, um, a quarter of a wavelength to have a high uh, reflectivity or not. Yes, this is how the entire coating is designed. The, 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 the thickness of the doublet is designed in order to be reflective at a given wavelength. So any uh, layer is uh, about a quarter, a quarter wavelength at the, the operation wavelength. But, um, and uh, the, uh, we are, um, we aim at showing that the, the high index material, for example, can be substituted with the layer at the uh, mix, mixture, okay? So we are first studying the mixture, then we will go toward the design of the entire coding. Expect if there's any urgent question, I think we can thanks again, Maria, and move to